in 2 Corinthians 10, 2 through 5 in the Passion. Listen to how Paul wrote it. Now I plead with you that when I come, don't force me <laughs> to take a hard line with you. The spirit of slap over there. He said, which I'm willing to do by daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that we are living by the standards of the world, not by the spirit's wisdom and power. All right. For although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aim. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish, listen, every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed ones. Since we are armed with such a dynamic weaponry, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose to completely obey him. All right? So we're not to fear him. Wesley also wrote this. Don't tremble before Satan. Challenge his authority. Leah, you challenge his authority in that dream. Don't cower when he roars like a lion. Remember, the Bible says he is as a roaring lion. He's not a lion. Take authority in Jesus' name. The old lion will slink away with its tails between his legs. <laughs> so we have to commit. We have to equip ourselves, all right? And so the enemy's objective always is to pervert justice, overthrow government. You know, look at the craziness that's in the world, the woke mentality, and the, uh, you know, just establishing, look at the anti-Semitic spirit that's out there. Look at all the fighting and the violence, the immoral leaders, right? We have that authority to pray. And God has a plan. Listen, we're not defeated. And so, but if you look at it from that perspective, from a worldly perspective, like, you know, we're up a creek without a paddle. You know, that's, that's not where we're at. The enemy is defeated by our prayer. Now, what can hinder us? Who can abide? Now, in Psalm 15, is that not working up there? Um, Psalm 15, 1 through 4, in the New King James Version. All right. But, Lord, we just thank you that the word's still coming forth. Right? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who might dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks, here's, this is the key piece that I want, and speaks the truth in his heart. Speaks the truth, is honest. Stop blaming everybody and your mother for your issues. Speaks the truth in your heart who does not backbite with, backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. We have got to be honest. We have got to say, Lord, here's my issue. Lord, show me my heart. I can't. Listen, people are going to offend you. People are going to hurt your heart. Just life. And you say, oh, but it's in the church. It's in any place that you're at. If you're around human beings, you're going to get aggravated with people, right? So whether you're in the workplace, whether you're in the church, you know, and I get it. Your expectation is, well, we're in a church. We should know better. We all should know better. But why do we then want to blame someone else, but we don't look at our own stuff? You know, we can point our finger, but we got three of our own back and, you know, pointing back at us. You want mercy, but you don't so, so show mercy. You have bitterness in your heart, but that's okay. But if someone's bitter towards you, you're all bent out of shape. See, we have to look at what's going on in our heart. Now, there are times, you know, that we have to confront. That doesn't mean you're combative. It just means speak the truth in your heart. Lisa's going to teach on that. And feedback is your friend. I used to hate that. Like, oh, I'm afraid to hear what they have to say. But feedback is our friend, right? But we have to be and say, Lord, I don't want my prayer life hindered. I have to choose to forgive people. I have to choose. Listen, offense is the major, major area. I was just listening. Did, did anybody ever hear of a, a girl? She's uh, Colombian, I think. She's from, her name is Julia Lopez. Now, she's, you can check her out online. She was in the occult. And um, her family was in Santeria. And she said, one of the main ways the enemy keeps you in bondage, hinders your finances, hinders your relationship is through offense. That is one of the main ways with Christians. Where are we all going to go out and smoke a joint? I mean, come on. 
I mean, you know, we're going to church forever. <laughs> you know, we're serving Jesus, right? Like, how is he going to get us? So, yeah, let's, let's, let's get offended. Let's hold bitterness in our heart. Let's judge them. Well, they didn't do this to me. Well, guess what? Neither did you at times, right? Like, we just have to get real already. I mean, we're going to keep these walls up and have bitterness coming out of our heart and, and mumbling and murmuring and complaining. And come on, it's hindering you. It's hindering me. And we all have our judgments at times. I mean, we all do, but we, have, we repent. Agree with your adversary quickly. It's like, oh, Lord, I know that wasn't right. Let me repent. But show mercy. The Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. You want mercy? Then sow it. Amen. And it doesn't mean you're just letting people off the hook. It just means you're going to act more like Jesus. Amen. And when the time comes, you know, you can confront. But listen, there was somebody very, very, very dear to me that hurt my heart terribly. And I was really hurt and, and angry over the situation. And I said to the Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Until this person says they're sorry, you know. I'm just really, I'm closing my heart off. And the Lord said, you're going you're gonna to have a problem here. He said, because my ways aren't your ways. And he said, and you have to choose to forgive and cut your losses and move on. He said, and I'll work on that person. But you're going to have to choose to forgive. And because I said, I want to hear this individual say, I am sorry. And he said, well, you're not going to hear it right away. And so he said, and until you shift. And when I started to shift my heart towards this person, um, this person started acting so much nicer. It was a family member. And, um, I am and, sorry. And it wasn't him. <laughs> it wasn't my husband. I'm just saying, because I will let you know if it was. <laughs> and, you know, when family members, you know, it's hard. And I thought, Lord, I was just so angry. And every time, you know, you get that knot in your stomach, like, mm, you know, I don't think she's angry. I love it. And so... Um, you know, then you know, and that's where the sarcasm comes out. That's where the bitterness comes out, right? And the Lord said to me, stop it. He said, because your way in your natural mind, remember the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty through God, through the pulling down a stronghold. He says, your way is not working. You have to let me soften this person's heart and recognize, let them, they're ashamed, let them humble themselves, right? He said, it's not going to be in your time frame, so let it go. Let it go. That's my word to you. Let it go for heaven's sakes. And I did. And you know what? Now the relationship has been so amazing. And, you know, I still want to hear. I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. But, but, but I let it go. And now we're nice to each other. So, um, 